Kamal the Secret Genius. What's up? How you doing? I'm great, man. How are you, Joe? It's good. Great to be here, man. I'm great as well. How's everything going on with you? Um, everything is good, man. Um, it, it's happy to see the world finally starting to open back up a little bit, and 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 comedy starting to get back what it was pre-COVID. Slightly trying to starting to figure out what that new normal is going to be, man. So I'm yeah, I'm great, man. Is there anything that you haven't yet got a chance to do since COVID that you're hoping to do once everything gets back to normal? Um, I haven't really had the opportunity to to get on the road. I've been I've been um around the city of Atlanta doing doing shows and doing rooms, but I haven't really had the opportunity to to get out on the road since COVID. So I'm really looking looking forward to to getting out and telling some jokes to some people outside the city of Atlanta. Are there any certain venues or clubs that you're hoping to hit once you're on the road? Um, not not necessarily anything specific. I'm you know I'm 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 kind of in the the infancy of my my on stage comedy career, so I don't I don't have the quite the luxury yet of being able to hand pick the venues that I want to go to. I'm, I'm just excited to get anywhere you know in, anywhere yeah. that wants to <laughs> wants to have me come and tell jokes i don't care where it is i'm, I'm excited just to get out outside the city and, and, and make sure my stuff works really <laughs> well and, i mean you did do some stand-up gigs uh last year but it was like probably like several months after covid that you did actually do some stand-up so how did you feel really rusty after not doing stand-up that long period of time um I don't I, it a, a little rust, but you you kind of settle back in very quickly, man. Because those those laughs are irreplaceable that you get from the crowd. You know, mm -hmm. you can the Zoom shows are are cool, and but you you don't you don't get that interaction. You don't get that instant yeah. gratification of of hearing the crowd laugh, and and once you are on stage and and you get and you get that feeling again. It's just it's like riding a bike, man. You just yeah. you just fall right back into it. Besides stand up, I understand you do some writing as well. So did you work on a lot of writing during like quarantine and just staying during COVID? Oh uh, yeah, I did. I I did. Uh, I did do a lot of writing on some on some projects that I'm working on and trying to finish up. Um, did a lot of writing of, of, of new material and jokes. So it was the the, the downtime was was definitely put to a productive use. I got a made made headway on a lot of things I probably would not have had had uh had the world been operating normally. Yeah. Uh, so I listened to the More Than Culture podcast and I mean I've known about you and everything and you know Rodney Jordan's mentioned great things about you when he was on the pod. And I'm just curious cuz you have the nickname the secret genius or Kamal the secret right. genius. So how'd you get that right. nickname? Um, like it's 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 really like it's 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 a few ways to dissect it. One, my 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 actual name is my actual last name is Secret. My name is Kamal Secret. Okay. So the the secret part is just my name, and and because my secret people think it's such a cool last name. Any any time I've had to choose a username or a screen name, I always <laughs> play off of that. Um, <laughs> And so, uh, and then I've I've always kind of been like a guy that was involved with projects and involved with different things and and around the scene and people didn't really know who I was or or what I did if you weren't directly involved with the project and and I've always had a knack for being able to figure out how to do things and mm -hmm. and get things done and always been very technically savvy. So there's that side, and then. Um, I, I I come from a family of very smart children. My okay. my brother, my brother is a Harvard graduate. My little sister um, went to Emory, graduated from Emory Law. Um, is now one of the youngest professors, law professors at Georgia State Law School. And like I <laughs> did not graduate from college, but think that I'm smarter than both of them. So it's like I am, yeah. even though I have these very highly educated, highly accomplished siblings there who are also secrets, yeah. I 
I call myself secret genius because I think I'm smarter than most. So that's kind of the threefold of where the name comes from. That is an awesome last name. I, secret. I never heard of something like that. If you, if you ever meet somebody last, with the last name Secret, it's very likely that they are related to me. Oh. I haven't met anyone with that last name that's not related to me. Were there other nicknames that you had at an earlier age that kind of revolved around that last name? Uh, no, like people people will just straight up call me Secret or Kamal. I've never really had a nickname. I've, Kamal is, 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 people just call me Kamal. Now people call me Genius or Secret. And people have always either called me Kamal or Secret. I've never really had a, a nickname like that. Well, and you got a pretty cool logo design for, uh, I guess, representing the secret genius. So do you have it on any merch? I I have it on um, one, it's not merch that's for sale, but I have it on one um, crew neck sweatshirt. Okay. And actually, one of my daughters, I have five daughters, she actually, hand, I wish I had it. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know where it is, honestly. But she hand painted the logo on there, and it looks exactly like like the design. Oh man, you gotta check it out. I like crew necks actually too. Oh yeah, yeah. I, we, I've got a I've got a uh, a crew neck merch piece of merch. I I should be a better salesman here and have some <laughs> some items to hold up. But, but yeah my current my current merch is my current campaign is um it's own yourself and it's it's really promoting uh creatives and people that are in in creative fields to maintain ownership of their intellectual property and not sell it over to corporations so that you can you can be able to make money off of it for, for years to come and you're not looking at someone else profiting off of your creation. And so that's 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 my current movement. I have a um another hoodie that says uh STFU sometimes shut the fuck up sometimes because who doesn't need to, to shut the yeah. fuck up sometimes? I feel like that's universally great advice. Like not all the time, but just just sometimes. Just keep keep it to yourself. Yeah. Well, and you're repping some merch now because you have your yes. more than this culture more podcast. Than, yeah. yeah, so you're a salesman. Oh, yeah, I'm doing. I'm doing something. <laughs> and then I have I have have the hat. This is Tyler's hat. Okay. Black hat. This is um. This is Ronnie's latest hat with the black hat. Oh, I like hat. that. Yeah, that's a nice one. And this is our photographer. This is his um. This is his brand. I like the inside Ronnie part. Lady. The flower the way trade, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah, under the cool. ground. Yeah, man. So every everybody's everybody's producing merch, trying to trying to capitalize on what we can. Well, my brother's a, a big fan of the hats of Ronnie Jordan, the blessed day of hats. So he wanted me to get some for him. <laughs> yeah, we can we can get you we can get some out there. I think yeah. he just got a, a fresh shipment of those in. A couple okay. days ago. Well, I want to talk about your podcast, uh, More Than Culture, which has been out for a few years. So what right. kind of inspired you to, because I understand you're one of the founding people of that podcast. So what inspired you to start that podcast? Um, well, I had I had kind of been out of the creative space for a few years. Um, prior to starting More Than Culture, I, was, uh, I did a lot of editing. Um, and a lot of shooting on different projects. So I was more of a behind the scenes. And I was I was trying to figure out how I was going to explore my next creative exploit. Um, and so I had I had bought a new camera. Um, Remo, who's also on the podcast, was uh, was running a studio that was just kind of a mixed creative space for artists. Mm -hmm. They were renting out, uh, you know, some visual artists, some some music studios, some um, just all different kind of artists were renting space in this this uh, this kind of warehouse unit that Remo was running. So I I started coming over there, and me and Remo have have uh, a previous relationship from being a part of Snack Pack, which was an improv an improv comedy group that was making a lot of headway in Atlanta, and ended up having to part ways and so we had always remained connected on that creative level and had a 
uh, some business some business partnerships and, and some other areas. And so I started going over there, um, just trying to be around creative energy, um, carrying my camera around, snapping photos, and trying to get get back into that into that um, photographer videographer space. And then you know, our me and Remo just have a, a, a an amazing relationship, and we would just have conversations every time I would come over there and other people would be there and and they would be amused by (laughs) just the way that we communicated with each other. So I I, I said to Remo one day, because at that time I was really getting into podcasts. This was like uh, probably early 2016. Okay. Um, Maybe, maybe summer 2016. I I just said to him, I was like, man, um, like, I think people are people are entertained by the way that we talk to each other. Mm-hmm. And if we recorded it on a podcast, I think people would listen to it. And so we started just talking about it and uh, you know, figuring out what the format was gonna be, throwing names back and forth. We landed on more than culture, which was a, which was um an idea that we had had for something else. Um and the name just fit and and we started figuring out what the format was going to be. We added a, another host uh, who at that time was, was a young lady named Allie Rock. Um, and we just we just cranked it up and got things going. And then uh, mm-hmm. the, the chemistry wasn't really there with Allie. So we decided to, to part ways with her. And it was just me and Remo for a while. Tyler was um, was a part of Snack Pack. Excuse me. Tyler was also a part of Snack Pack, okay. and um, and he was 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 uh, was starting to look for for another creative outlet uh, with, with shooting sketches and other things. So he started coming to that same warehouse space that Remo had, um, and eventually just started sitting in on multiple podcasts. And then him and Ronnie were working on Boston together at that time. And so they were just naturally together a lot. Ronnie started coming with him. He liked the vibe of what what we had going on, and, and then we just eventually made it official and and made that foursome the squad. So, do you still handle like any behind the scenes footage for filming those podcasts? No, and I I, I have gladly handed those tests over <laughs> to. Um, a gentleman who goes by Dot Net Digital, he is responsible for the shooting and editing of our podcast. We have a young lady named uh, Key who is responsible for our sound. Um, so yeah, it's, it started with with me and Remo kind of doing everything. Remo was okay handling handling the setup of the cameras because he had that he has experience with shooting as well. I didn't have any experience with sound recording prior to doing this. The, probably the first five or six episodes we were renting um we were going to another studio and, and paying an engineer to record for us mm-hmm. but it just it just by the fourth or fifth time we were like man this is i don't want to pay for this like i don't want to keep yeah. i don't want to i don't want this overhead this is too much yeah. we're not going to last having to pay 65 70 dollars an episode it's like, mm-hmm. we're not going to be able to keep this up and so we we had an old yamaha soundboard okay. um, we got an interface, ordered some some uh-huh. cheap mics off of uh, Amazon, and just and just got going and and slowly and cool upgraded our equipment over time as as we were able to, and, and as we gained momentum, different people started coming on like, hey man, I'd I'd love to help out and okay, and, and here we are now with with I think a very high quality product. Well, you mentioned that you were interested in that videography and photography. So is that something you still dabble in, like on the side? To a to a degree. To a degree. I I I haven't I haven't picked up an actual camera in a while, but you know, I play around on my phone. I try to take creative shots and just just keep my eyes sharp. Um but I haven't I haven't Actually, my my camera is in the camera bag at the studio for probably a year and a half now. The, the camera that I had at home was just my my carry around. I gave it to one of my kids, so I don't. I haven't. 
I, I, I feel like my, my eye is there. I can still compose a very great photographs in, in, in the heat of battle if I needed yeah. to, but I haven't, <laughs> I haven't really done anything in a while. I like the studio that you guys are in now, or at least using, because I saw the, I was watching the video with Erica Duchess when I was just doing my research for her, her, when she was joining us. And yeah, I like the studio that you guys are in. Yeah, that, that is, that is now the studio, the, the MTC Digital, more than Culture Digital, that is the, the studio that Remo and I run together. Um, so it's the home for more than culture. It's, it's the home to a couple of other music studios. Um, and just a, a creative base for for a lot of a lot of people to see. And I understand you guys have been doing live podcasts or recently. Is that correct? We um well we were we were doing live shows pre COVID. We were doing live shows once a month for since like uh, I want to say like maybe April twenty seventeen. Mm-hmm. We were doing shows pretty consistently once a month. And then uh, COVID hit, slowed everything down. And then we, during um, during summer of 2020, we had what we call the pull-up series, which is, which is the outdoor drive-up comedy show and uh, mm-hmm. and movie with, you know, get, allow people to, to get outside, stay in your car, still socially distanced. We had vendors coming out selling food. So if you're outside the car, you had to wear your mask. And, so yeah, we we we've we've done a lot in that space in the live space, and we're looking to uh to kind of get that going back going in the next few months. I mean, I love to check it out. That's something I'm hoping to do myself is just live podcast and maybe check out. I know, like, was it Joe Budden had like a cool setup for a live podcast? So that's something I'm like, I hope to do like someday, maybe like somewhere down the road. Yes, yeah, it's, it's it's fun, man. It just it gives you the opportunity to to have that direct connection with your listeners, and you know, ask answer whatever questions they have, and just have some some direct interaction. It's really it's fun. Oh man, it's awesome. And I think I heard that or saw something like Ti made a recent appearance on one of the podcasts. Is yeah, Ti. We had a we had a um uh a live podcast. Uh, the day before 420 and 419 was part of the, the Puff Puff Pass mm-hmm. festival that was going on that entire weekend. Um, and yeah, T.I. just kind of kind of showed up. Um, we ended up coaxing him on onto the stage and giving a, a nice little 30, 45 minute interview from him. It was fun. It was oh man, it was yeah, it was really fun. That was a, that was a great. That was just it was a great uh, night. It was a good night. So do you still listen to other podcasts as well? Um, I do. I listen to Joe Budden's podcast. I listen to um I listen to Drink Camps. I listen to a lot of sports podcasts too. I listen to uh, All the Smoke with um Stephen Jackson and Matt Barnes. Mm-hmm. Um Knuckleheads with uh Quentin Richardson and Darius Miles. Um Jalen and Jacoby with Jalen Rose and, and David Jacoby. Um, yeah, most most of the podcasts I've listened to are sports podcasts. And of, of course, 85 South. So when I do like research on guests, I go through a lot of podcast interviews. And there's some podcasts that I'll listen to that hadn't really lasted that long or maybe just last for a certain period of time, but they're really good. And I'm like, how did this not like last for a longer time? Yeah. Yeah. The things, it, things happen in life, man. And it, and it pulls you away. Like yeah. I, I, I mentioned snack pack earlier, um, which was the improv comedy team in, in Atlanta. That was just, it kind of pre, we kind of predated social media and, and we're, kind of uh, ahead of our time a little bit because there was there was no people weren't ingesting video content at the rate that they are now like youtube was really the only place that people were going to see videos like there was no there was uh there was face facebook was around but it wasn't it wasn't what it is now oh, yeah. instagram instagram was iphone only um, and only photos. And so 
And then right at the time that we, like, you know, we had been running in place for so long and not really making any headway and having great live shows that were, you know, filled with fans there, but not, and, and doing that on a monthly basis, but not really able to expand. And then there were so many members and people just started doing other things. Um, and so we had to, to, had to disperse. And I think that happens with a, with a lot of things. Like, it's, it's just the timing isn't right. Yeah. Um, and, and, and other things happening and you end up having to pull back and, you know, then one, one week goes by and two weeks go by and you, you might get an episode in when you're supposed to be weekly and then you, yeah. you just, you just fizzles out. Man, I've, I've seen that happen. I've seen that happen a lot. I tell anybody that, that is interested in, in starting a podcast to be prepared to be talking to nobody for at least a year and a half, <laughs> two years. Like not, not a lot of people are going to care what you're doing until other people start to care. Like, especially people like your family and close friends are, are they're not going to support you. Like, they're not going to listen to your podcast. Oh, yeah. It is going to be complete strangers that are gravitate that, that find your content and and gravitate towards it. And then once your family and friends see other people paying attention, they'll be like, Oh, you're you're still doing the podcast. Let me <laughs> let me let me give it a listen and see what you got going on. And some people aren't some people aren't prepared to 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 get through those all that time of just talking to nobody and doing it for the sake of the art before yeah. anybody even cares about it. Yeah. I would say, and I still do it, you know, just for the art or just for the passion and doing this. But I mean, like you mentioned, I would say just recently, I've just had like friends and family members kind of just started noticing right. know, this <laughs> that I started just because I've been doing it like and being consistent with Lee for right. at least a year. I've been, I can say that I've been consistent with it. But yeah, it's just kind of like, oh, okay, let me check it out. Yeah. <laughs> That's, it's, it's, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. Well, and you mentioned that you're still like in your infancy and doing stand up, but I understand the podcast actually led you to doing stand up. So, how did that happen? Um, just man, like Re Remo, um, Remo and I had had discussions years ago about potentially me doing some writing um, for people. But I had never really had any interest in being on stage, but always have always known that I have a, a certain knack for for uh, for writing and, and, and telling jokes or whatever. But Ronnie Jordan is a legend in comedy. You know, somebody that I've I've, I've been seeing on on TV for fifteen twenty years telling jokes. And uh, when when he when Ronnie became a part of the podcast and got to know me a little bit, like he would would constantly tell me, he's like, man, you need to get on stage, man. Like you you need to you need to say that on stage. Like you need to get on stage and okay. start saying this stuff. Um, and so like I, I I I took that to heart without anybody even really knowing. And started writing. Um, we started trying to put together a, a, a little set, a little five seven minute bit. Yeah. Um, and then at one of our live shows, one of our more than culture live shows that we did, and um, this was uh, September 2019. I just told I just told everybody like I'm I'm going up tonight. I'm doing a set. Like nobody knew. I think I had told Tyler prior to we just just to um, kind of get some pointers from him okay. on uh, on how to get out of the set and how to kind of close it out. But nobody else really knew, um, and it went well. And I, 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 I fell in love with it, man. I haven't, I haven't stopped since. I love Ronnie. I remember his Ruben Sutter impersonation, and this is like when it first happened on you, like posted on YouTube. Yeah, man. Ronnie is a legend. Man. He has <laughs> hours and hours, and I've, I've seen Ronnie do literally probably six, seven different hour sets that are completely independent of each other. There's, there's no telling how much more material he has yeah. that I've never heard. Like he's 
Ronnie is special. Yeah, yeah, I just love that impersonation. Uh, you know, it's, yeah, that Rupert, yeah, it's so classic. He gets, I've, I've, I've seen crowds like, and that's like that's that's the level that he has. In, in the the, just the the um, how memorable his material is. Like yeah. people <laughs> at shows are like asking him to do jokes from from 15, 20 years ago. Like, hey, man, do the Ruben, do the Ruben Stutter, man. Do the fat man at the door. Like, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. Uh, I saw a while back, but this was like right before COVID hit. I would say I saw Bruce Bruce at a comedy show, and I was hoping for him to do a couple of stuff when he was on Comic View, you know, hosting the show. But he, right, I mean, he right. uses some. But my favorite is when he has different faces when he ever picks up different samples. So he, that was actually my favorite one. He did. <laughs> yeah, Comic Comic View was, was man. I hate that it's not that it's not streaming anywhere. That oh. you can't hmm. because it was such such a classic time oh, yeah. comedy. I would say I was like early high school days when but yeah, it was always like I loved Comic View and it was great like the next day people would talk about it and like right. even though it right. was late at night too. Yeah, it was ten o'clock. Yeah. It's it's crazy to remind you me now. And I understand you're actually really big on documentaries and you like to watch documentaries on comedians. So what are some of your favorite? Some of my favorite documentaries on comedians. Um, my fa- I, don't, I don't remember the name of it. But who, who, gets, who gets more notoriety for his comedic acting but had a very prolific stand-up career as well. Um, and no, and this, and this was even prior to me doing comedy. I um, it was something that, that that really stuck with me. I so much so that I like I I took a note in my phone, you know, that's probably still it's probably still there to this day. Um, and it was it was uh, Robin Williams talking about something that he learned from Steve Martin, mm-hmm. um, because his his comedy was was rapid fire, like it was. It was high paced. It was it was zip zap all over the place. And, and Steve Martin told him about the comedy of pause and how to just allow people to digest what you just done. Slow down a little bit, and you know, and, and know know when to be quiet and let the joke resonate. Um, and that that really stuck with me. I so that I don't remember the name of that documentary, but it's it's really good. It's about Robin Williams. Um, I don't know if this qualifies as a documentary per se. It, it is. It is a documentary, but um, um, Block Party. Okay. Dave Chappelle and uh, where he was putting together that that concert with the Roots and, and Talib Kweli and. That fusion of hip hop and comedy in that documentary documentary concert is it 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 it, 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 it was like it, it defines it, it is me <laughs> like that it is a representation of of me because I have a I have an immense love for hip hop music and I have always had an immense love for stand up comedy. Um, okay. And that that fusion that that Chappelle is able to to uh, to make in Block Party was was amazing to me, and it, I, I think it it inspired me because at that at that time I was I was shooting, so I was I was, and it had always been a dream of mine on, on that side to uh, to direct music videos. Okay. And so at that at that time, I was doing a lot of um, this freelance work, going around shooting indie hip hop concerts and stuff. And so the way that he presented that that concert and infused the comedy throughout, and still presented an amazing show was was amazing to me. Um, I was so those those two the. Um, 
there's a there's a documentary on Richard Pryor, I believe it's also on Showtime. Um the com the comedy store documentary is great. I think that's on Showtime too. Okay. Um but yeah, I I I I love documentaries, man. Like I, at, at one point I wanted to be a documentary filmmaker. Like I went to uh, I, I did a uh, went for the, to the Center for Documentary Studies at Duke for a program and got certified okay. as a so yeah for for a long time that's that's what I wanted to do was make make um, hip hop documentaries and direct hip hop music videos but <laughs> that that didn't pan out. Yeah. Do you have any other favorite documentaries besides the like focusing more on comedians? Um. You mean just documentaries, just in general? Yeah. Um. Probably my my favorite documentary of all time is uh, Hoop Dreams. Okay. Um, because it's, I love basketball. I was I was a basketball player as a as a youth. Um, and just the way the 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 length of that documentary and the way he was able to to stick with those families from you know from 10 15 years and tell those stories was 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 amazing to me um i i just feel like I, I i like learning about i'm i'm a, i'm a i'm a i love to learn things yeah i i learn a lot of the things that i've learned I've been from watching television. Yeah, like I have been from watching watching documentaries, watching movies, uh, researching things on YouTube more recently. Um, and so yeah, I, I I was I was a cinephile growing up. Like I I watched everything. I I wanted to see the bad movies, the good movies, mm-hmm. <laughs> the bad shows, the good shows. Because I feel like even. Like you, you, you can learn something from everything, and that's the kind yeah. of the scope that I, I've always been so through. And so, I, I, there's so many documentaries that I've seen and loved. Like, Hoop Dreams is, uh, is is always a favorite for me, just just for the sheer length of the project and, and how long of the, of that study lasted. And he was able to stay with that family, those families for so long. I mean, they really hook you into like, at least for me, and when I saw it at an early age, that you know, you would actually really think that the the kids that were on there would actually become like a professional basketball player. I think. Oh one, yeah, yeah, absolutely, Arthur H for sure. <laughs> I think one. <laughs> I think in his first year, I think he got hurt or something. Like, he, <laughs> and then like he couldn't play anymore, and. Yeah, like I, the whole time I'm like, oh man, these kids are gonna, you know, get big. I, I say a Thomas was on it too, like playing with one of them. So, yeah. right, right, yeah, yeah. It just it just goes to show, man, that it's <laughs> it's not easy to make yeah. it. <laughs> you know, like you see these kids with such promise at an yeah. early age and think that they're gonna be the next stars, and then they, you know, things happen and. They end up not yeah. making it. And, yeah, life happens, man. Yeah, man. It's that's, it's a common story, man. Yeah. It's a common yeah. story. So, Kamal, what can our listeners expect from you coming up? Well, you can expect to see consistent weekly content from More Than Culture. We are uh, we will be launching a Patreon within the next few months with with a lot of exclusive content that we will be producing with the guests that we have. Um, in addition to, you know, just some sketches and sketches and other ideas that that we've had and haven't haven't put out over the years, and some old content that never made it out. So be looking, be on the lookout for that. Okay. Um, be looking for me to come to a stage near you, man. I'm trying to to spread my comedy wings and and establish myself as a real force in the stand up comedy game. Um, and that's that's really all I'm focused on, man. Is 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 building up more than culture to be a a, a known center for content creation, and you know, and 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 myself to be a a recognizable name in stand up comedy. Since we're wrapping up, is there anything you would like to share with our listeners? Um, 
Listeners, if you are interested in supporting more than culture, there are a few ways you can do it. You can. The easiest way is to go to YouTube, subscribe to our channel, whatever app you use to listen to podcasts, whether it be Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio. I don't think we're on title. Um, I got to look into that. Um, Wherever else you can get podcasts, find us on there. Be on the lookout for the Patreon. If you were, it, oh, I'm sorry. That was the first way to to support okay. more than culture is going to YouTube. The second way you can support more than culture and myself is to go to our socials. Instagram is more than culture spelled like this. Culture spelled C U L T R. My Instagram is the Secret Genius. The third way, and and probably the the best way for us to support is by buying merch and to buy any of our merch you can go to merch the number four higher h-i-g-h-e-r dot com that's where you can find all my merch the shut the fuck up sometimes on yourself tyler's merch black hoodie black hat is there um remo's merch yo today is there um we're still working on getting Ronnie to Blessed AF. If you want Blessed AF, you can go to officialblessedaf.com and get your hats, your hoodies, your t-shirts, your mugs, and all the other plus thrill merch that Ronnie has failed with. So, yeah, that's my spiel. Yeah. <laughs> and if the listeners want to check out Ronnie's Blessed AF sweater, I'm actually wearing one so they can actually see it off of the YouTube yeah. video. Yes, yes. Well, appreciate having this chat but kamal the secret genius thank you so much for joining us in irie chat and best of luck on everything thank you for having me man i appreciate it